we're up we've got power the yard doesn't look any worse for wear there is one large limb down i'll show you in a minute the ups man just came with an amazon delivery so if he was able to make the driveway i'd say there's nothing on the driveway things are looking pretty good here west of i-95 i think east of i-95 this morning we're going to hear a little bit different story yeah there's the tree limb that's down it's just uh the other side of the creek left of the bridge didn't hurt anything the panther is in such a better mood this morning hey buddy hi panther yeah panther is in such a better mood this morning hi buddy hi gray how are you yes we have some leaf debris on the driveway but i've seen much much worse after a hurricane so that's nothing our ego blower won't handle donnie's down there uh oh he's already out there with the blower i was wondering why he wasn't coming back with his uh with his uh unicycle and that's because he's gone to the end of the driveway and he's blowing his way back this way probably wants to make sure it's good for me and ruby on our way out these guys are fixing to scatter due to the blower but everyone is doing good this morning hi slate they all hunkered down in the garage i didn't have to do anything to protect them last night it just wasn't that bad here that's the hawk <laughs> Glad to see he's doing good this morning. <laughs> They're so cute when they walk tail to tail. Little minor damage there to my butterfly bush. Here's Don. A little exercise with his paper this morning. So he's not using turbo. Do turbo. Yeah, there you go, baby. That's more my speed. <laughs> I sent Don in to get his coffee and I finished up the top pad up here. It's still breezy enough that more new stuff is going to come down, but it's better for now at least. These guys don't like the blower, but they're not flat out petrified either. So Don's been watching YouTubes and he finally found a video where they showed the trunk and the frunk of the uh, Porsche Taycan. Right, and uh, as you can see, I, it's hard to tell if, if it's just the center part, if those black plastic things on the edges are, maybe there's storage underneath them. Um, this picture doesn't really change. Um, you might could get a carry-on in there. Uh, I would call that uh, pretty small because you can see the back of it um, isn't very deep. If you look very carefully right there at, at his hand, you can see a line where it changes color. That's the bend in, and what you're looking at is the floor coming forward. Well, the front lip isn't going to be very tall because the hood slopes so much. Right. The back's going to be twice as tall as the front or significantly taller than the front. So um, I don't think that's, you know, you don't buy a Porsche for storage space. I, I understand that. But uh, I don't know how useful that that's going to be. I mean, a couple well, of grocery bags. Well, you can bags. carry your storage cable, your, your yeah. charging cables in it. I have to say, though, that I give them, uh, yeah. you know, accolades here for uh, it looking very neat, just like it the does Tesla. Look very clean. I don't want to see EVs with all that stuff showing under the hood. Right, I agree. They, so they it looks all... it looks like a Tesla yeah. frunk, even yeah. when you open the hood on the Taycan, there is no component showing the trunk. There's nothing back there, but it's a totally normal looking trunk, and then this frunk hides everything. It's not like the uh, Kia Soul or uh, Kona or the Chevy Bowl or or the iPay. I mean, it's they hide all of that stuff. They, done a, they took a, a a note out of Tesla's book and hit all of that stuff. Yeah, good job there. I'm heading out for a bit. 
I uh, didn't have Ruby plugged in overnight for obvious reasons. We did briefly lose power around 1 a.m. And uh, so it was a in and out, in and out kind of thing. So it was good for her not to be plugged in. There were kitty cat footprints all over Ruby's hood. So uh, I went out there with a microfiber and some detail and very gently cleaned them off before Dawn saw them. Well, town's looked uh, pretty normal so far, but there is work over here on a line with some guys trying to pull a tree limb down or something. Let me be clear, that's the utility company guys uh, working to get the tree limb out of the way or to pull um, wire back across the street or something. So here's the Echo Auto device uh, that came yesterday. The air vent mount and the actual device itself in the black box. Um, I'm thinking the air vent mount is a definite no-go, but I'll at least take it out of the box and we'll see. So what's included is uh, the actual Echo Auto, a uh, in-car power adapter, a USB micro cable, an auxiliary cable, and the air vent mount, which I haven't taken out of the box yet. So this is the vent mount. This uh, small dimple here is uh, where you put the cable through. The flat piece up here is where you're supposed to mount the actual Echo Auto device to. And this larger dimple back here is the part that's supposed to go in the vent, but it won't work. So if you try to line it up where you can get close enough, you can see that the um, little um, dimple can't actually get onto the vent. It just can't. It physically can't get in there. It won't be able to do that. And the ones on the side aren't going to be of any help because height-wise, they're not any taller than the uh, others are. You know, this vent would have to be more uh, down here if there were going to be enough height to not run into the bevel here underneath the dash. So what I suspect Don and I are going to do, if I like this thing enough to do it, is we have the... Um, you know, the um, dash cam remote button here. And Don has that with um, just one of those little pieces of sticky stuff that you can re-stick over and over but doesn't have any adhesive. We could probably mount this right here with another piece of that same sticky stuff. So when I get home, I'll talk to him about that. Although that means a wire running down from that point to get over to the... Uh, to the 12 volt so that's not very that's not going to look very pretty so i plugged the 12 volt into the car receptacle and i plugged the usb cable that came with the echo auto into the 12 volt adapter and now i'm going to plug in the uh, actual echo auto device to the micro usb end of that cable this other um device down in there that's the Roav Viva that allowed me to have Amazon Echo um, before so um, and it was able to stay down in this compartment and still hear me so I guess that's another option we can see if Echo Auto's microphone is good enough to stay down there as well uh, kind of hidden in that cubby that might be best case scenario I suppose another thing we could do is consider mounting it right here next to I guess that's a speaker um, that might also work as well with one of those uh, non-permanent sticky um, attachers. Hello, let's get rolling. When you can safely do so, go to your Alexa app and add a new device.
Your device is ready. It's 4.21 p.m. Enjoy your evening. So, I have it all tucked away down there. Let's see if she can hear me. Uh, what time is it? The time is 4.23 p.m. And so, happy read a book day. Ah, uh, okay. So, the answer is, at least while I'm parked, she can hear me. And I don't have to have that thing mounted to the dash or anything. And life is good. Um, so... For now, I'm just going to leave it like that. It sounds like it responds faster than um, the Roav Viva device responded. The Roav Viva device, it would also go off um, inappropriately, wrongly sometimes. Of course, the one at home does that too. She tries to insert herself into our conversation sometimes. Um, so I'll have to play with it, run with it for a few days. And Johnny and I test it out on the school run on Monday and, um, you know, see what I really think operating it for a couple of days before I can truly give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But right now I'm leaning towards a thumbs up since I can put it down there in the console and not see any wires and not mess up my air vent flow. And it's got, it seems like it has a lot going for it right now, but uh, is it better than the Roav Viva or not? I don't know yet. I'll let you know. Stay tuned. Guardian Angel's not very crowded and I was going to go in, but then I realized that I got to be home in 40 minutes to take Johnny to Taekwondo. So I could run in for 15 and then race home, but nah. I don't see that Taekwondo is closed, but I'm going to drive by there just to make sure there's somebody around because there should already be people in there if we're having class tonight. I'm knowing noticing that it says uh, Amazon Alexa here instead of my audible book um, I think with the Roav Viva as long as I had it on phone as the output over here it would hear me and respond uh, where I could hear it if it uh, was on say streaming I could ask it stuff and it would hear it but I couldn't hear the response because the response was going to the Bluetooth so if I can't play my Audible book, which I guess I could ask um, A to play versus just going into my phone and starting it from Audible, um, that might be a difference in usability. I'll play my Audible book. Getting the selection from Marianne's Audible library. Resuming Imperfect Chemistry. to head up the stairs to bang on my door. Stop my book. Seems to have worked. The sign is out out front. They're open. Drop in on the green room. I'm not home right now. I just was messaging you to let you know they are indeed open. I've just driven past there. So be ready at 510. Okay. All right. The end call. That's very interesting. So I'm it's hearing nice. this static in the book now. I yanked the sheet I'm not sure what interference is causing it. Pulling out a water balloon. Well, it's not the stuff that was in there with it. Let me switch over to streaming. I see you found your offerings, Sam said. So it went away right away on uh, streaming. So it's something Bluetoothy. I told Alexa to pause the book. It's possible it's the book itself. I don't hear anything now. What time is it? The time is 4.52 p.m. But it came back when she answered me. 
it wasn't doing that initially and I'm not sure what else to try to get it to stop I mean I could reboot the center console but um yeah I don't know it sounds like interference from something I rebooted the MCU and the first few seconds no crackling and then it was right back again I managed to get out of an uncomfortable dinner situation. So I was able to tell A to um, play the Ride the Lightning podcast. It still had the static in it. I tried moving it out of the compartment and up here on the Alcantara. It still had the static. Um, yeah, I don't know what's interfering with it. I mean, I only have three cell phones with me today. Um, I don't know what's inter I don't know what's causing the interference. So I'm playing the book from my Audible app on my phone now. There's no static. What time is it? The time is 4:59 p.m. So she can still hear me and she can still answer over top of my book. My book was kind of still playing in the background. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to read up and see if anybody else has the static interference. So I raced home, grabbed Johnny, dropped him off at Taekwondo, raced back to South Park to do an EX raid, rushed over to Emmanuel Holiness to do a level 5 raid. Then I'm back over here at the Taekwondo school um, waiting for Johnny. They should be getting out here in a minute or two. While I was in the house, I asked Don about the um, interference, and he said it's probably the 12-volt adapter. He said just plug the USB directly into the um, USB port in the Tesla. So I've removed that 12-volt uh, adapter that came with the um, Echo Auto, and so far no static. Like, immediately it was gone. So I'm going to drive around like that for a while and hopefully the interference stays gone um this um 12 volt adapter it does have two usb ports so that's kind of nice but um if it's going to cost me that much static then i'm certainly not going to use it there's donnie <laughs> oh yeah i see him i'll let you out to go handle that did you survive Hey. hey. How are you? I'm good. That's because I didn't put it in park. Silly me. I think so far so good on plugging it directly into the USB. Yeah, those little 12 volt to USB adapters, that Anchor brand that that one isn't, is high quality and they work well. Everything else, I can't... I, I would just tell anybody if you're going to buy a 12 volt to USB adapter, the Anchor is the company. Yeah, you need to make sure it's properly shielded. Yeah, that's got me it's got metal case. I mean, yeah, it, and it really, it's only 50% more. In other words, you can get one for 10 bucks. Here's Anchor. this one. Yeah, this is just Chinese, and I'm not knocking the Chinese, but they built it's built to a price point, and the price point is very inexpensive. And after you notice it's got two it's not just one it's yes i did two. notice that which yeah. makes it useful yeah, if it right. if i wasn't having a problem with it well i'll have to listen just a little bit more but the noise seemed to go away instantly when i removed that good good <coughs> so thanks for the tip you're welcome i don't know why i didn't think about that they yeah. i just followed the instructions well, they said to plug it in as so i plugged it in well, but have, duh since we uh, freed up some from the uh van and such we have a couple of those anchor ones in the drawer and that's why i said i have plenty of these if you want to go you back to using USB one sure back. okay okay here's my last parlor trick for today this is don's idea turn the garage door on okay and there it goes Don's over there making sure I remember to say on instead of open. <laughs> it's that silly thing that we have. They, uh, you know, uh, the language was probably not native English and on and open were sort of confused. 